forced the government out. But let's uh, talk to President Assad's cousin, one of his cousins, Rebal al-Assad, who runs the Organization for Democracy and Freedom in Syria. Very good afternoon to you. Um, do you feel that um, real change can still happen in Syria if Bashar al-Assad stays in power? Well, I think today the problem we have to be uh, very uh, pragmatic and practical. Uh, the Arab League and the Syrian regime have to let, uh, to work together to allow those observers in. And this has to happen right away because uh, at the moment the only people who are uh, losing are and suffering are the Syrian people. Indeed, the Syrian people, many of whom are calling for President Assad to go. Uh, I mean, would you address that question? Do you feel that real change can still happen, given those calls, given the violence that has taken place, given the people that have been killed, that are still being killed, with Bashar al-Assad in control, or has his time now passed? I mean, we've asked him many times to, to resign. It's either to reform or resign, but apparently he's not, uh, he hasn't done that. And uh, uh, the problem also is that we have to be able to uh, form a united uh, uh, opposition, not a fragmented one as it as exists right now, because uh, the regime in Syria is very happy about that. And uh, we have all seen how, there's, for example, the Syrian National Council, how they, uh, they have attacked uh, members of the domestic uh, uh, opposition when they went to meet the Arab League in Cairo. Uh, and as long as things are, I mean, are going this way and the opposition is fragmented, the Syrian regime is still fe feeling strong. Uh, the people around uh, Bashar who uh, need to be prized away from him, uh, they need to see that they will be included in uh, any new settlement in Syria. Uh, I see. That's an interesting point you make. I mean, at the moment, uh, they would feel, and uh, many of them, I suppose, uh, visiting the violence upon the protesters, those people around Bashar feeling that they've got a lot to lose. Exactly. They, they feel a lot of uh, a lot to lose. Uh, there are people from all sects. Uh, there's a huge number of Ba'ath Party, around 2 million Ba'athists in Syria, and they see where are they going to go. They're asking themselves, where are we going to go uh, in a new, any new settlement? And uh, the problem, with, as, as you've seen again with the Syrian National Council, they've only been calling on the regime to go. I mean, that way the regime is not going anywhere. And the Syrian National Council has to accept to speak to all other opposition. It has to be an all-inclusive opposition. It cannot be just based on Islamist or uh, or, or a communist or a other group, it has to be an all-inclusive one. And also, again, there was in uh, there is a new uh, uh, you know a new event happening is that we're also having the uh, 700 Libyan fighters in uh, in Turkey, uh, which is again very dangerous. I mean, how is that going to bring uh, stability to Syria? How is that going to help? Uh, they're led by uh, Belhaj, who was in uh, uh, who was uh, an Al Qaeda member, and he was in Guantanamo, and now we have him in Turkey, and this is not going to make the situation better. I mean, I'm just still trying to get a sense of how you see uh, a mainly peaceful process, transition, taking place. As I said, the most important thing is to get all opposition groups to sit together. They have to, the international community has to bring all the opposition groups together to show uh, people around Bashar in the regime and people inside Syria, minorities and others, that in a new settlement it will be in all uh, inclusive, it will be for all Syrian people, not only for Islamists, uh, as it happened, for example, in Egypt or, uh, uh, or Libya or others, uh, you know, because Syria is not uh, e uh, Egypt. Syria has a lot of minorities. Syria is not Tunisia. Syria, uh, Syria is not Libya. Syria has 40% minorities. It has another, and the rest, uh, other, pe uh, the, the other, uh, you know, 60% of the people are not all Islamists. You know, 80% of them are not Islamists. So they all have to feel that they will be included in a new settlement. Uh, as we have seen until now, for example, Damascus and Aleppo, the two main cities, have not risen up. They have not gone against the regime. Why? It's certainly not because they are pro-regime, but just because they don't feel that, uh, uh, they don't see any future uh, uh, for them in, any, uh, in the new settlement. Okay, uh, Reval al-Assad, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much, sir.